What's up, all? JC3 here, the baller of YouTube, the general. Welcome to Topic Tackle. My take for today is on the one player that even the GOAT, Michael Jordan, couldn't be. All of you have absolutely shattered the like button on my last three videos, and the Shaq video has near 1,000 comments. Thank you guys so much. Keep it going down in the comments and hit that like button for more of these videos. My goal is to keep them coming a couple times a week, high quality, so thank you for showing your support. Even those of you who hit the dislike button because it shows me that you care one way or another. So let's get this started. Before the 2017 NBA Finals, the discussion of who the real GOAT is between LeBron and Jordan had hit a high point. Almost every sports personality was talking about it, and some even made a case for LeBron that was compelling. Even to me, I was seriously considering LeBron for the GOAT if he beat the Warriors with KD, but that didn't happen and things pretty much stayed where they are right now. But in those arguments, one glaring stain on MJ's career was brought up in favor of LeBron, and it was that he never beat teams with three or more future Hall of Famers like LeBron did with the 73-win Warriors. Here's how I see it personally. LeBron plays easier comp in the East before facing an all-star loaded team in the finals, which speaks to his three and five record. Jordan played better comp in the East before facing one or two all-stars in the finals, which speaks to his six and O record. In respect to both, Eight finals is impressive, and six for six is impressive. LeBron never lost in the first round, Jordan never lost in the finals. And here we have today's topic because as great as Jordan was, there was one all-time great player that he never beat in the playoffs. That player was Larry Bird, in which Jordan has an 11-17 record against an all-time regular season matchups and an ugly 0-6 record against him in the playoffs. Okay, to be fair, everyone pretty much gives 22-year-old LeBron a pass for leading his 2007 Cavs to the finals and getting swept by San Antonio, a team with three future Hall of Famers. So can't the same be done for Jordan, who in game one of the 1986 playoffs was 23 years old in two months, playing against five future Hall of Famers? Adding on to that, Jordan was coming off a season in which he broke his foot in the third game and only played in 18 total games, coming back late in the season to lead the 30 and 52 Bulls to the eighth seed. Look at his roster. Now look at the Celtics roster. Now look at his stats next to Bird's. When he dropped 63 in game two in a 135 to 131 double overtime loss, Bird said, I didn't think anyone was capable of doing what Michael has done to us. He's the most exciting, awesome player in the game today. I think it's just God disguised as Michael Jordan. In 1987, Jordan's 40 and 42 eighth seed Bulls weren't much better roster wise, but this time they kept it close, losing game three by their widest margin, 11. Jordan's numbers were ridiculous, but they couldn't overcome Bird's near triple double average and his four other Hall of Famers. So after looking into this, yeah, people can make the case against Jordan that he couldn't beat these Celtics teams, but let's think about this. You know how good the Warriors are with four future Hall of Famers that a veteran LeBron hasn't beaten in the finals yet? These Celtics teams had five each, and Jordan was in his second and third years in the league playing with extremely less firepower than Kyrie and Kevin Love next to him. Still, we have to acknowledge Larry Bird as the one player that even the GOAT couldn't be. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Should Jordan's failure to beat Bird be counted against his legacy? Remember to subscribe, like, and leave your feedback in the comments down below. And we'll be back with more Topic Tackle soon. JC3, out!